quick changeover or single minute exchange of DAI is a key lean tool. So let's check out how to implement it at your factory. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. In today's video, it is about SMED or a quick changeover, single minute exchange of DAI. And for Lean, this is a super important tool because it doesn't just allow you to take out some of that waste time from your changeover. It really can, if you implement SMAD uh, correctly, it can reduce changeover times from hours to minutes. The whole idea, a bit of that single minute exchange of die is, well, maybe that it's not happening within one minute, but at least within the single digit minutes. And that is possible even with changeovers that used to last hours. So it can be a really powerful tool to get back some OAE, but even more important, it will also allow you to put those changeovers back into your production schedule. So there are a good number of reasons why you would like to increase the number of changeovers. Now that feels like introducing waste into your system and it will be if a changeover costs hours to complete and if it's really long compared to the actual effective production time. But if you can get that sorted down to that single digit minutes, then you can change products more often and seriously reduce your work in progress the, because you can reduce batch length, run lengths, things like that. Really nice stuff. But now let's get into how do we actually do that. And in the textbook, so to say, there's a six step process how you can implement this quick changeover or SMAD for your production. And it starts with 5S. And 5S, I hope you know the system, but 5S is basically good workplace organization, good housekeeping, clear standards, right? So the, the workplace is just organized in a good way and that good way, that level of organization is maintained by your operators, and everyone else touching the workplace. Then we get into sort of a, a combination with step two and three, they are both about really an important concept of internal and external work. I did a whole video on this, but then I called it inside work versus outside work. Go check out that video for more details on this. It is exactly the same concept. The idea is that some of the tasks that you do during your changeover, they really need to happen during the changeover because they are just, the machine has to be off. You need to get in there. You need to do those things. They are just critical. You cannot move them out. But a lot of tasks that you do during the changeover at this moment, well, you could actually prepare them or do them afterwards or have a completely different set of dies or stuff that could be, with, of course, some you know improvements, but could be taken out of that critical path of time inside your changeover. Those are external tasks. So we observe very closely which tasks do we have in our changeover. Video is a very good way to do this, by the way. And then we check you know, what is internal and what is external. Or better yet, I mean, we can observe what is internal and external right now. You should also observe what is external. So what are people doing to prep your changeover? But more importantly is to, to think about how can we make as many of our tasks external so that the actual machine downtime on the changeover is as short as possible. So think about Formula One racing, an often named example, because they are so, so fast, right? Those pit stops in Formula One racing, they are super fast because they have, for most factory settings, way too many people. But do think about those pit crews they can make the difference between nothing or millions. So they need to be as fast, they get that money back. So for their purposes, they're not with too many people. I mean, if you check the, the Ferrari pit crew, I, I believe it's 20 or 25 people or so just standing around there. They all have very synchronized tasks, but they also have special tools. They have double tools. They have everything laid out, prepped. Uh, they train a lot just to do this. And then they can do it in under two seconds. It's like, it's ridiculous. But that is because they moved a lot of preparation work, but also everything afterwards to the external, because they know that when the car is on the road again, 
they have plenty of time to prep the next bit, uh, remove everything that they need for now. So they managed to do this very nicely. Then we continue with this whole internal, external, or inside work, outside the changeover work. And we first focus on what remains as internal work and reduce that. And then we go into the external work and also reduce that because, you know, making it external didn't take it away, right? The, the idea of this quick changeover is not in the first place to save operator time. This is really about process time. So usually machine time, right? You want to get that machine up and running as quickly as possible. And that can have very serious advantages. But it does mean that the work usually still needs to be done. Now, when the machine that also has to be operated, it can even mean that you will introduce a bit of extra labor to make this quick changeover happen. So very strict waste thinkers will often say, no, no, but we're introducing more costs, not allowed. Trust me, usually those costs are worth it, but of course, we don't want to keep those costs. So we want to reduce both the internal, because that will really bring in the most profit, and the external work, because that will reduce the costs. And then when we have all of that, you repeat the whole process, because we assume that you cannot really get that done in one go. But if we take that Formula One example again, um, there is also a nice comparison where they started. And there are these uh, the nice videos also online, you can find them on YouTube, of the Indy 500 in the 50s or so, and then the Formula One pit crew team uh, somewhere in early 2000s. So there's about 50 years of difference between them, but it took them minutes to do a pit stop to two seconds. And it is wonderful, but that was not one step. They have been perfecting the process of that pit stop over all of those years. They didn't jump. So they have repeated that process quite often, and so should you. So a couple of tips right, on, on how to get this implemented. And for this, um, also you know, keep thinking about that pit crew, right? But 5S, it really just gets your system back into basics, makes sure that you have all of the tools that you need, Think about also ordering extra tools if needed. I mean, you are there to make the work for your operator uh, go as smoothly as possible, right? To make sure that they get that machine up and running and doing what it should be doing as soon as possible. But also in that whole 5S philosophy, and we're really talking about implementing basically pretty good 5S before you really start on those. But also here, luckily with the repeat function at the end, we go back, we also improve the 5S status again, right? You know that 5S is also one of those continuous improvements, but they have a lot of standards and operator skill in there as well. Keep that in mind. You need to make your changeovers standardized. You need to train things out. You, you need to know what your people are doing so that you can also train people and what they should be doing. And then you can keep observing them and every time you observe it, so you're looking for that, what is inside, outside, uh, what could be externalized to outside work, but also what is actually keeping the operator from just moving along, right? Look for the seven wastes. So we're really looking for, are people moving, searching, do we just have too much lying around? Make sure that you get rid of the, the obvious wastes, right? Then, when we do this internal, external, I, I would really say, go, go check out my other video on inside work, outside work. A really nice example, as I put in that uh, video, is uh, these Korean restaurants, right? They, they sort of became uh, famous for it. They will have your whole nice you know, rice table with all the little bowls and everything on it. They actually prep those tables in the kitchen and then they just roll an entire table counter out into the restaurant and slide it over to the table where you are sitting with your party. So they, they just made the whole table sort of movable, right? Because they have a top shelf where they put everything on. Afterwards, they just reel that whole thing away and do all of the washing somewhere else. So that for you as the restaurant patron, it just it's so quick. You have a nice and clean table until you can eat. And then afterwards, it all goes away again. That was really nice. 
uh, internal external type of task for this one i would like to add a little bit so we've got in the smart textbooks we've got reduce only there is another sort of slightly more advanced system to look into and that is ecrs Eliminate, combine, reduce, and simplify. And that is sort of a more advanced version of steps four and five. And what that means, and maybe before we go into that, one thing, especially because of the repeat step, right? When you are starting this sort of journey of reducing your change over time, first focus on the 5S part. Then Go into it again with open eyes, focus on getting most of those internal tasks to outside of the actual changeover to become external tasks. Then go over it again, improve that part, check that part, and then go for a full ECRS. Right, so also build this up in stages, especially if it is new to the people in your factory. First go in with 5S, then go in with 5S and internal, external. We've tried to reduce it, then go in with all three of them. But the idea here is that you look at tasks in this order. So when, uh, and, and you will first, you know, sort of externalize the internal tasks, but when you look at any of these tasks, you see w which ones are actually redundant. I mean, can we not just simply eliminate some of the tasks? It's not always that simple, right? But think also about, Sometimes it is that simple. Sometimes you are just doing things that are not needed or not needed anymore. But also, can we, sort of, with a bit of an automation or so, eliminate that manual task? Can we, by rerouting something else, eliminate it? So can we make process changes that will completely eliminate the need for some of those tasks? Think about uh, the cleaning stuff that is quite often also in this whole changeover process, if we have strategically placed valves or we have a system that can go around, maybe it can just you know, clean itself or prevent the whole need for cleaning. And because of that, we can eliminate those small cleaning steps. Then the stuff that is left, can we combine them? And, and combine is, can you do them at the same time so that you basically don't spend three or well, two, three, four times all of the time on the task, but you do it at the same time. And because of that, the time that your machine is down is seriously reduced. You just put a couple of small tasks inside the same time as one of the other tasks. That may be done by adding some resources, getting some people there so that you can change two parts at the same time or uh, have somebody in cleaning while you are setting up the machine for the new run here, things like that. So, this can add costs, but those costs are almost always recovered because the machine is up more quickly. I've got a nice video on that as well. Though, uh, if maybe adding labor can reduce your total cost, that is one of the ways to combine tasks. And maybe it's just possible to set a whole number of stations roughly at the same time. But if you do an alignment correction on your lines, you can pick every station at once but maybe if they have a different color or a different sign that they make, you can just take your product, check all of them, center all of them at the same time, make the corrections for all of the stations. It's just an example that definitely works in, in printing, but, but also in a bunch of other uh, things where you need to align what a number of heads are doing. Then reduce, we got the, the same one. So reduces in, indeed and make it quicker and make it a bit less, make it any way that you can. And this is quite often also done by investing a bit in the machine or uh, by getting uh, another part so that you can just exchange parts instead of take out a part, do all of the thingies, put it back in. So this is all reduction. Do you see that in the ECRS mentality, reduction of the time, it comes relatively late, right? So can we fully eliminate it? That would be even better but also reducing those tasks that are left. A very good strategy. And then, and this one is often forgotten, 
is, okay, so those things that we could not eliminate or reduce, can we simplify everything that is left? So maybe that doesn't save us too much time, but it will save us a lot in operator attention, or maybe, again, make it possible to then combine stuff. But really check all of those tasks that are left. How can we make them as easy as possible? This will also likely make them more foolproof, reducing your chance of defects, of things going wrong with your machine during a changeover. So important step as well. That whole system, that is what brings you shorter changeovers that will allow you to be way more flexible in your production, in your, your internal logistics, so to say, of the production organization. Really great advantages that that brings. So first make sure everything is ordered, that you have all the tools that you need, then check which of the tasks that are now internal. Can you make external to the changeover? Reduce first those internal tasks and then those external tasks for the slightly more advanced teams. Do it with the whole ECRS system. And do not forget that this is a continuous process, so repeat the same system. You do not need to jump from an eight hour to an eight minute changeover in one go. Right? This will take time, creativity, process changes, all kinds of things. So do it in a number of stages. One of the most important advices on this one. Set some realistic goals. And really make sure that you do this together with your operators, together with the people that actually do the changeover. Observe their work, help them as well to identify, you know, things that they've been doing this daily or weekly, often for years, right? Things that they say are, well, you just need to walk to the next department to get that key. You see it, and you say, oh no, let's, let's have a duplicate key just right next to you at your own workstation. Those are the things quite often they will no longer come up with because they're just too used to this being the way it's done. But definitely, definitely don't forget their own input as well because anything that frustrates them, anything that from time to time goes wrong and because of that becomes an obstacle, you really want to fix that as well. It'll save you just as much time, often even more, but it will also, because it makes it easier uh, for those operators, because it also shows them that you are working with them, create more goodwill that creates more thinking and brainstorming and more ideas, right? You need that in the system. That's sort of a nice last tip on these six steps. I hope that that showed you, you know, how you can get this whole quick changeover or SMAT process working within your factory. If you like that, don't forget to so hit that like button. And, you know, on this, there is a very nice little course as well that goes through the why and the how and how to put it into the broader picture on beltcourse.com. So I'll link that free mini course under here and know that it's also part of a broader sort of a course that is, it is nice for you just as, as the one person, but it would be way greater if you can do it with two or three people or more from your company you and do multi-company things as well. Check that one out on beltcourse.com. Really great simulation way of training these type of skills. So check out the free stuff, but definitely also check out that brilliant way of adult learning that you know I like. For now, I wish you the best in improving your setup times. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.